Hey everybody, welcome to Jason Explains Things. So 15 months ago, I installed the Mr. Cool DIY third gen heat pump here in my shop, and I've been using it nonstop for heating and cooling ever since. Recently, one of my subscribers, Sanjar, suggested in a comment that I do a long-term review of the Mr. Cool heat pump, and to give all of my subscribers who are not off-road enthusiasts a break from constant Forerunner videos, I thought that would be an awesome idea. So today I'm gonna to give you guys an update on the performance for the heat pump during the summer and winter, if any issues have come up with my installation or the unit itself, how loud it is inside and out, and last but not least, we're going to build an easy to build cover to hide the extra coiled up refrigerant lines that are very common when you install one of these. You know what, scratch that, my cover idea turns out to be a huge failure in the end. <laughs> Last quick note, the install video and this long-term review video are not sponsored by Mr. Cool or any retailer, and I paid full retail price for all this stuff, but if you use the Amazon affiliate link in my description, that does help out my channel a little bit. So how has the Mr. Cool DIY mini split performed since I installed it? I would say nearly perfect. I had one issue uh, crop up that I will talk about in just a sec. Now, the summers here in central Washington can be brutal, getting up to 113 degrees this year. And this 18,000 BTU size mini split was able to keep my shop in the low 70s, high 60s the entire time. I never once had any issues of overheating or failure at all. Now my shop is pretty modern and well insulated, but it does have one big flaw and that is the two older garage doors uh, that aren't awesome. To mitigate this without having to spend $3,500 on brand new garage doors, I installed Reflectix Radiant Barrier Insulation that you can see there, it's all shiny. <laughs> now there are two videos on my channel about this if you're interested um, that show the installation and then a long-term review, kind of like this format. That DIY project combined with the mini split has made my shop into the go-to place for my buddies and I to hang out and work on projects in. Now, the mini split that I installed works great as a heater as well, but as you can see up there in the corner, my shop already has a heater that is original to the shop when it was built. And since that one uses natural gas, it is a much more efficient way of keeping the shop warm when it's really cold outside, but I still use the mini split as a heater pretty regularly, and I have one big reason for that. And this all comes down to noise. <laughs> this old heater works great, but it is crazy loud. So as you can hear, this is a big pain if I'm out here, say, making a video or trying to listen to music. So let's turn this old beast off and compare it to the mini split. All right, let's fire her up. And this is about as loud as it gets full blast while air conditioning. Cool, so this is about as loud as the mini split ever gets. Can you hear it while I'm talking? Probably not, I'll shut up for a second. But yeah, definitely not that bad, right? Let's go outside and I'll show you how loud the condenser gets. Air conditioner running. It does sometimes get a little louder than this, but as you can hear, it's really not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> Have I had any problems with the heat pump? The answer is only once. Last winter, when it was like zero to 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, um, the actually the back of the unit, the outdoor unit, completely froze over. It was kind of encased in ice, about that thick. And that caused the heater to stop working. Uh, I was out there and I'm like, what happened? And I saw I was flashing an error code. It then defrosted itself, and I think it took overnight to do that. But then the next day, uh, it worked perfectly fine, and it has never had a problem ever since. So on that topic, it's really important to keep the air filters on the indoor unit clean, which they're really easy to get at and just clean off with just some compressed air. And then for the outdoor unit, you want to make sure during the winter months to keep that area behind the unit clear of snow and debris and things like that because that can cause issues as well. This area is pretty well protected with the roof overhang here from the shop, but I have had to remove snow from behind there several times. 
So with that basic information out of the way, I thought it'd be cool to answer some really common questions I got on the first video. First off, and really important, what size of mini split should I go with? Again, mine is the 18,000 BTU size, and Mr. Cool offers from 12,000 BTUs all the way up to 34,000. Now, um, again, this all comes down to the size uh, and square footage and ceiling height that you're trying to heat and cool. My shop, for comparison, is roughly 530 square feet with nine feet tall ceilings. Along these lines, a lot of people ask, why didn't I just go with the 12,000 BTU size? And the reason for that is that one is rated up to 500 square feet. Now, this is only 530, so only 30 more square feet, but I have these older doors and I get some pretty extreme weather, so I thought it's better to go a little overboard than try to push something beyond its recommended use. But if you're lucky enough and the space you have is under 500 square feet, the 12,000 BTU one is definitely the way to go. Reason number one for that, beyond the cost, is the electrical hookup. That one only needs 120 volt rather than 240 like you see here. So in the first video, I made a few people mad when I said that the refrigerant lines in this kit are pre-charged with refrigerant. A lot of people said, Jason, no, wrong. All of the refrigerant is inside the condenser. And it turns out, friends, we were both right. How about that? <laughs> so with the Mr. DIY kit, the lines are indeed pre-charged with refrigerant but the majority of that refrigerant is indeed inside the condenser. When you open up that seal, that's when they all come together. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. So I truly hope that that explanation answers that criticism. Um, but if you still don't believe me, which I don't blame you for, I will link to a bunch of resources that kind of prove what I just said. So in the end, the only real negative thing about this kit, in my opinion, is those the extra refrigerant lines that you have to coil up and leave somewhere because you can't trim them to length. Now, uh, what I've done here is I've coiled them in a vertical orientation, which is exactly what they say to do. That way you won't have any oil trap issues or things like that. So what I have done here is what they recommend in the manual and has and will continue to work fine but it does look kind of ugly. So what we're gonna do today to kind of fix this is I'm just gonna make a really simple cover out of some scrap wood from a fence that fell over that I have laying around. Well, my cover idea didn't work out for several reasons. First off, this is already from here to here is already as, uh, as much clearance as they say you need. And if I protrude out any closer, then the possibility of snow building up right here would be very, very likely. We got this connection, we got this over here, and just trying to make something around this that wouldn't block everything is just not gonna work out. So uh, this is what it is. One more really important note about the Mr. Cool DIY uh, heat pump is that you might have trouble finding HVAC companies to service it should you ever need that. Um, I have a really great company that's been servicing my house ever since I bought it. And when I installed this, they, they saw it and they're like, oh, did you do that yourself? And I said, yep. <laughs> and then they're like, hmm, uh, how's it work for you? And I said, it works great actually. And then they said, cool. Well we're not gonna ever service it should anything ever go wrong. You're gonna have to find somebody else. And I said, okay. <laughs> so you might have that uh, response for other companies in your area should anything ever go wrong with this. But the cool thing is, is that Mr. Cool warranties it for seven years. At least they did on mine when I bought it. So that is a good amount of peace of mind and I've had nothing go wrong with it other than that one time where it froze over. Um, so. I'm not too worried about this. Well, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss other awesome videos I'm doing here. And if you'd like to suggest a follow-up to another past project like this video was, please leave a comment below and I'll consider doing that. To send you all on your way today, I thought this would be funny. I'm gonna leave you with some nice peaceful music. Ooh, there it is. And some footage of me attempting to build that line set cover that ended up being a horrible failure. All right, God bless guys. Don't forget to do it yourself.
Call me Mr. Butterfingers. Ha, ha, ha.